Hello, my name is Peter Baker. With this course, we will look at a basic overview of what Linux is. We'll then move on to using the shell terminal, where we will cover the file system, configurations, commands, permissions, and then finally, how we can automate processes with the use of bash shell scripts. Let us understand what Linux is. First of all, it's not a program like a word processor is. It's a kernel created by Linus Torvalds while he was a student at the University of Helsinki. The kernel is essential, but by itself, useless. It can only function in the context of a complete operating system. It's used in combination with the GNU operating system. Imagine GNU as a big complex puzzle with a big piece in the middle missing, the big piece being the Linux kernel. The complete puzzle equates to a functional operating system. It's important to understand what a kernel is, as this is the defining component of Linux. A kernel is the central part of an operating system that is responsible for interfacing all your applications down to the physical hardware. There are two major types of kernels competing in today's market, Windows and Unix-like kernels. The Linux kernel falls under the latter, as does BSD, Mac OS, and Solaris. The term Unix-like refers to the fact that they are based on or operate similar to the original Bell Labs Unix operating system. Kernels tend to fall under three categories, microkernel, monolithic, and hybrid. A microkernel only manages what it has to, CPU, memory, and IPC, or inter-process communications. Everything else in a computer is seen as an accessory and can be handled in user mode. Monolithic kernels like Linux are the opposite. They encompass not only the CPU, memory, and inter-process communications, but other things such as device drivers, file system management, and system server calls. The Windows kernel falls under hybrid because it has the ability to pick and choose what to run in both user and supervisor mode. In the 21st century, it has proven to be one of the most important technological advancements, enabling technology for a range of computer-driven devices. It's not only used to run on smartphones, desktops and laptops. Big corporate companies also use it to power their infrastructures. When you and many other people around the world make a search with Google, behind the scenes, thousands, if not tens of thousands of servers are powering its search technology to deliver you the results you desire. It's used in governments, stock exchanges, Amazon, Wikipedia. The list is exhaustive. Typically, Linux is packaged in a form known as a Linux distribution, mainly for desktop and server use. Popular mainstream Linux distributions include Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, and Fedora. These all include the Linux kernel, supporting utilities and libraries, and a large amount of application software to fulfill the distribution's intended use. The Linux kernel is released under the GNU General Public License and is a prominent example of free and open-source software with a strong, ever-growing community. If you're not familiar with the open source community, it is a community that believes that a model of public collaboration and contribution creates better software than private companies who want to keep everything they do under wraps. But if this is the case, how is there any money to be made if all your hard work can be seen by anyone in the world? Open source institutions such as Red Hack Inc. provide training support and certification, subscriptions, or any forwarded donations to keep alive viably. You can imagine companies that have a big responsibility with their data, such as medical or financial institutions, who would need support and who would be willing to pay for these services if a problem was to arise. In the next lesson, we'll move straight on to using Linux via the terminal. This has been Peter Baker, and thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to the SMKS channel.